Good afternoon and welcome to the 210th of the COVID calls. This is a daily discussion of the COVID-19 pandemic with a diverse collection of disaster experts. My name is Scott Gabriel Knowles. I'm a historian of disasters at Drexel University in Philadelphia. Today is a COVID calls tribute on International Holocaust Remembrance Day. My planned discussion with Representative Nakima Williams, who represents the Georgia 5th District in the U.S. House of Representatives, will be rescheduled. Please stay tuned for that at another time. But I will go forward with the tribute aspect of the show. Just a reminder, you can catch COVID Calls live every weekday, 5 p.m. Eastern Time on YouTube. Just go to the COVID Calls YouTube channel to watch. You can also watch COVID Calls on Facebook Live and on Periscope. You can hear COVID calls anytime recorded as podcasts on Spotify, iTunes, Podbean, or anywhere you get podcasts. You can also keep up with COVID calls via Twitter using the handle at US of Disaster or at COVID calls. Please do help spread the word and send suggestions for future guests and future topics. Please feel free to suggest yourself as a future guest. As of today, January 27th, 2021, there are 2,162,333 deaths from COVID-19 globally. That's according to the Johns Hopkins University Coronavirus Resource Center. There are 25,466,642 cases reported in the United States. There are 426,052 deaths from COVID-19 reported in the United States today. That's up from 423,653 reported yesterday. We live in a time in which the truth of the COVID-19 pandemic has been distorted for political and economic gain. We've all seen that over the last year. It's manifested itself in many different ways, unfortunately, directly from the White House under the previous president. Distortions of the truth, the big lie, as it's sometimes called, is nothing new certainly should not surprise us with the history of the European Holocaust of the 1930s and 1940s available to us. The historical record is clear, clear if we choose to seek it out. Denial of the Holocaust is also not new, and perhaps Americans should have been much more careful students of this denial. The goals of its propagators, the way it feeds on pure hate, and also disinformation, confusion over facts, and a lack of historical knowledge. We've seen that same kind of denial weaponized in the fight against the pandemic. Indeed, we've often seen the anti-Semitism anti at the root of the Holocaust itself connected with denial of the pandemic. The distance from the Holocaust and Holocaust denial, the COVID denial, is very close. It's not far at all. Indeed, it's terrifyingly close. As a way to bring some humanity to the numbers I read before and as a tribute on this day, I've been reading a life story or story of advocacy for those impacted by the pandemic. I'd like to continue that now and also some news items marking International Holocaust Remembrance Day. The headline is Holocaust survivor Margit Buchalter Feldman, 90 of the coronavirus. This is by Timothy Bella and was published April 17th, 2020 in the Washington Post. If Margit Buchalter Feldman had not lied about her age to the Nazis, the 15-year-old would have been murdered with her family at Auschwitz. In fear of joining her parents and nearly 70 family members who died in the gas chambers, Feldman, a Hungarian teen known only to the Nazis by the A23029 tattoo on her left arm, told them she was 18 and was assigned to forced labor. After she was liberated in 1945, Feldman, who could still picture big heaps and mounds of dead bodies lying all around, moved to the United States, where the Holocaust survivor made a life of her own in New Jersey. Years later, she eventually turned to teaching young people about the millions who died during the atrocities of the Holocaust. It's important for me, she said, to remember that six million of my fellow Jews were slaughtered and a million and a half of those victims were children, she said in a 2017 interview. I'm here and I firmly believe it is because God wanted me to survive. 
and be here and tell the free world what an uncaring world did to its fellow human beings. Eldman, who dedicated her life to educating children about the Holocaust, died of complications from COVID-19. New Jersey Governor Phil Murphy announced in April, the 90-year-old Holocaust survivor of Somerset, New Jersey, died in April of 2020, one day before the 75th anniversary of her liberation from the concentration camp. Her legacy is best captured in her work to ensure that the world never forgets the horrors of the Holocaust, the Democratic governor said at a coronavirus press briefing in April. Margit gave us so much hope over her 90 plus years. Murphy added that her husband, Harvey, remained hospitalized for COVID-19 at that time. The governor said Feldman's son, Joseph, is a doctor working on the front lines of the pandemic in New Jersey, which had more than 75,000 confirmed cases of coronavirus and over 3,500 deaths as of April 17th, 2020. Born in Budapest on June 12th, 1929, the same birthday as Anne Frank, Feldman was the only child of Teresa and Joseph Buchalter. In 1944, Feldman and her family were taken from their home in the small agricultural town of Tolcha near the Czech border and imprisoned in a nearby town before heading to Auschwitz. She was imprisoned in a series of concentration camps ending up in Bergen-Belsen. In the 2016 documentary, Not A23039, Feldman remembered being surrounded by death. She said she could still taste the horrible soup that was served, often with worms swimming around the bowl. We were put into a barrack where people died, she recalled in the documentary. The straw that you laid down was full of whatever came out of their bodies. Vomit, discretion. It didn't take 24 hours for your body to get covered with lice. By the time she was liberated by the British on April 15, 1945, Feldman was all alone and in bad shape. She was suffering from pneumonia and pleurisy and was injured by an explosive set by the Germans who were trying to destroy the camp, according to research collected by Raritan Valley Community College. After recovering in Sweden, Feldman moved to the United States in 1947 when she found out that she had an aunt living in New York and she became an x-ray technician. She met her husband, Harvey Feldman, while recovering from tuberculosis at a New York hospital, according to her obituary. They married in 1953 and had two children, Tina and Joseph, who were each named after her parents and three grandchildren. It would take decades before Feldman would even agree to open up about what she went through during the Holocaust. But when a grammar school student from her neighborhood in Boundbrook, New Jersey, asked her to tell her story as part of a class project, she allowed the boy to record her story on tape arose from the ashes of Auschwitz, Krakow, Grand Three, Bergen-Belsen, as a child of 15 years of age from the Holocaust to rebirth and a new life, she once wrote. The response from the class was overwhelming and it inspired her to keep going. In 1991, Jim McGreevy, then a Democratic state assemblyman who would eventually become governor, worked with Feldman in forming the Holocaust Education Commission to promote education in New Jersey. He described her to NewJersey.com as a teacher filled with a sense of compassion and kindness, who never showed any bitterness for what she had experienced. He was just an extraordinary human being to have lived through all that, to have lived that life, and to have suffered through those camps, yet to be grateful for life, see the promise of tomorrow. She was just such an exceptional person, he said. Her work continued in the state as she helped pass a bill that mandated a Holocaust and genocide curriculum in New Jersey public schools. She spoke to classrooms of children for years and released a book in 2003 about her life as a survivor, Margit, a teenager's journey through the Holocaust and beyond. Margit devoted her life to telling her inspiring story and touched the hearts of thousands of students, educators, and members of the community, her obituary stated. Her goal was to inspire people to stand up for one another and fight against all forms of prejudice and hate. Grevy told NewJersey.com that he was struck by how Feldman would tell him to let go of any feelings of anger or distress. Knowing what Feldman went through as a young girl, how could he not listen to his friend? After living through that hell, she was blessed with the gift of authenticity. She lived fearlessly and she loved fearlessly, McGreevy said. 
It's like there was nothing that the world could do that would cause Margit to live anything less than with full authenticity and the full measure of her being. Thanks for joining me on COVID calls on this International Holocaust Remembrance Day. The headline is Auschwitz Survivors Mark Holocaust Remembrance Day online amid coronavirus pandemic. This appeared in the Associated Press today, January 27th, and was written by Vanessa Guerra. State line, Warsaw, Poland. The Jewish prayer for the souls of people murdered in the Holocaust echoed Wednesday over where the Warsaw ghetto stood during World War II. As a world paused by the coronavirus pandemic, observed the 76th anniversary of the liberation of Auschwitz. Most International Holocaust Remembrance Day commemorations were being held online this year due to the virus, including the annual ceremony at the site of the former Auschwitz death camp, where Nazi German forces killed 1.1 million people in occupied Poland. The memorial site is closed to visitors because of the pandemic. One of the few live events, mourners gathered in Poland's capital to pay their respects at a memorial in the former Warsaw Ghetto, the largest of all the ghettos where European Jews were held in cruel and deadly conditions before being sent to die in mass extermination camps. From the Vatican, Pope Francis spoke of the need to remember the genocide carried out in World War II, saying it was a sign of humanity and a condition for a peaceful future. Francis also warned that distorted ideologies could lead to a repeat of mass murder on a horrific scale. Remembering the Holocaust, he said, also means to be aware that these things can happen again, starting with ideological proposals that claim to save a people and end up destroying a people and humanity. Among those commemorating from home Wednesday will be Polish-born Auschwitz survivor Tova Friedman, who arrived at the camp when she was five years old and was six when she found herself among thousands of survivors liberated by Soviet troops. Friedman, who is now 82, attended last year's event at Auschwitz and had hoped to take her eight grandchildren there this year to help them better understand her experiences, but the pandemic prevented that. From her home in Highland Park, New Jersey, she recorded a message of warning about the rise of hatred, which will be part of a virtual observance organized by the World Jewish Congress. Across Europe, the victims were remembered and honored in various ways. In Austria and Slovakia, hundreds of survivors were offered their first doses of a vaccine against the coronavirus in a gesture both symbolic and truly life-saving, given the threat of the virus to older adults. In Israel, some 900 Holocaust survivors died from COVID-19 out of the 5,300 who were infected last year. Israel, which counts 197,000 Holocaust survivors, officially marks its Holocaust Remembrance Day in the spring, but events were also being held by Remembrance and survivors groups across the country, mostly virtually or without members of the public in attendance. Meanwhile, Luxembourg signed a deal Wednesday agreeing to pay reparations and to restitute do dormant bank accounts, insurance policies, and looted art to Holocaust survivors. Politicians and regular people alike were joining a World Jewish Congress campaign, which involved people posting photos of themselves and hashtag we remember. Those will be shown later Wednesday on a screen at Auschwitz next to the gate and a cattle car, the way victims were transported there. The online nature of this year's commemorations is a sharp contrast to events marking the 75th anniversary of Auschwitz's liberation last year, when some 200 survivors and dozens of European leaders and royalty gathered at the site of the former camp. It was one of the last large international gatherings before the pandemic forced the cancellation of most large gatherings. More than 1.1 million people were murdered by the German Nazis and their henchmen at Auschwitz, the most notorious in a network of killing sites set up across occupied Europe. The vast majority of those killed at Auschwitz were Jews, but others, including Poles, Roma, homosexuals, and Soviet prisoners of war, were also murdered. In all, about 6 million European Jews and millions of other people were killed by the Germans and their collaborators. In 2005, the United Nations designated January 27th as International Holocaust Remembrance Day. While commemorations have moved online for the first time, one constant is the drive of survivors to tell their stories 
as words of caution. Rose Schindler, a 91-year-old survivor of Auschwitz, who was originally from Czechoslovakia but now lives in San Diego, California, has been speaking to school groups about her experience for 50 years. Her story and that of her late husband, Max, also a survivor, is also told in a book, The Two Who Survived, Keeping Hope Alive While Surviving the Holocaust. After Schindler was transported to Auschwitz in 1944, she was selected more than once for immediate death in the gas chambers. She survived by escaping each time and joining work details. The horrors she experienced, the mass murder of her parents and four of her seven siblings, the hunger being shaven, lice infestations are difficult to convey, but she keeps speaking to groups over the past months only by Zoom. We have to tell our stories so it doesn't happen again, Schindler said in a Zoom call from her home this week. It is unbelievable what we went through and the whole world was silent as this was going on. Friedman says she believes it is her role to sound the alarm about rising anti-Semitism and other hatred in the world. Otherwise, another tragedy may happen. That hatred, she said, was on clear view when a mob inspired by former President Donald Trump attacked the United States Capitol on January 6th. Some insurrectionists wore clothes with anti-Semitic messages like Camp Auschwitz. It was utterly shocking, and I couldn't believe it she said, and I don't know what part of America feels like that. I hope it's a very small and isolated group and not a pervasive feeling, Friedman said Monday. In her recorded message that will be broadcast Wednesday, today, Friedman said she compares the virus of hatred in the world to COVID-19. She said the world today is witnessing a virus of anti-Semitism, of racism, and if you don't stop the virus, it's going to kill humanity. The headline is, We Owe This to Them, Show Us Survivors in Vaccine Spotlight by Kristen Grieshaber and Philip Jen. This was published by the Associated Press January 27, 2021. Headline Vienna. Hundreds of Holocaust survivors in Austria and Slovakia got their first dose of a coronavirus vaccine Wednesday. An acknowledgement of past suffering and a tribute to resilience 76 years after Soviet troops liberated the Auschwitz death camp in Nazi-occupied Poland. More than 400 Austrian survivors, most in their 80s or 90s, were expected to get shots at the convention center in Vienna. Some were brought by shuttle or by ambulance, while others were accompanied by their children. The fittest among them took the subway. We owe this to them, said Erika Jackie Bovitz, who organized the capital vaccination drive for the Jewish community of Vienna. They have suffered so much trauma and have felt even more insecure during this pandemic. Jackie Bovitz set up the vaccination drive with support from the Austrian health ministry and Vienna city officials. 12 doctors, all members of the Viennese Jewish community volunteered to administer shots to older Jews. While the event took place on International Holocaust Remembrance Day, vaccinations were not limited to survivors of the Shoah. All Jews in the area older than 85 were eligible to receive them during the special tribute drive. Some of the 8,000 members of Vienna's Jewish community were vaccinated in December when residents of a Jewish nursing home got their first doses, Jackie Bovitz said. Over the past month, the majority of the elderly Austrians living in nursing homes have received the first dose of a vaccine against COVID-19, Austrian news agency APA reported. Earlier this week, the president of the European Jewish Congress called on all countries in the European Union to ensure that Holocaust survivors have access to coronavirus vaccines as quickly as possible. More than 6 million European Jews were murdered by the Nazis during the Third Reich. The EJC estimates that today only about 20,000 Holocaust survivors still live in the European Union. Throughout their lives, they have shown mighty strength of spirit, but in the current crisis, many have sadly died alone and in pain or are now fighting for their lives. And many others are suffering from extreme isolation, European Jewish Congress President Moshe Cantor said. We have a duty to survivors to ensure that they are able to live their last years in dignity, without fear, and in the company of their loved ones. Vaccination efforts across the EU's 27 nations have been off to a slow start with not enough doses available, leading to wide criticism of officials. In a similar project to that in Vienna, the Jewish community of Bratislava in Slovakia also vaccinated Holocaust survivors on Wednesday. 
We're very, very grateful that the vaccinations are taking place on this symbolic day, said Thomas Stern, the head of the Jewish community in Bratislava. Some 128 survivors were to receive their first shot at Bratislava's Jewish Community Center on Wednesday, and another 330 across Slovakia in the coming days. In Israel, home to many Holocaust survivors, more than 80% of those over age 70 have received at least one dose of a COVID-19 vaccine, and nearly 60% have received the second dose. Because Israel's vaccination campaign has moved so quickly, Holocaust Officials said there was no need to single out Holocaust survivors. Still, about 900 Holocaust survivors died of COVID-19 in Israel last year before vaccines were available, and about 5,300 survivors were infected, according to Israel's National Statistics Office. The vast majority of those killed in the Auschwitz death camp were Jews from across Europe, but other non-Jewish prisoners included Poles, Roma, and Soviet soldiers and homosexuals among the victims. About 192,000 Jews lived in Austria before World War II, after the annexation of Austria by Nazi Germany in 1938, which was enthusiastically supported by many Austrians. More than 100,000 Jews fled the country. Tens of thousands were murdered in death camps. With World War II having ended more than three quarters of a century ago, the world's approximately 240,000 Holocaust survivors are all elderly. Since many were deprived of proper nutrition when they were young, they suffer from numerous medical issues today. In addition, many live isolated lives, having lost their entire families and also have psychological stresses because of their persecution under the Nazis. None of those receiving the shots in Vienna wanted to be interviewed by reporters, a fact Jackie Bobitz attributed to persistent anxiety among Holocaust survivors. People are afraid that they could be recognized, she said. We know we're living in a time when anti-Semitism is rising. People are much more careful in what they do. Three articles marking International Holocaust Remembrance Day. Thanks for joining me on COVID calls today. Please join me tomorrow on COVID calls and every day, every weekday, 5 p.m. Eastern time. Tomorrow, my discussion will be a discussion of public health in the United Kingdom and the United States. We'll be talking to Dr. James Dodd, who we've spoken to on a previous episode when we talked about the Life of Breath project. He's based in the UK and we'll talk with Drexel University's own Dr. Esther Chernak, a frequent contributor to COVID calls. See you tomorrow at five o'clock. Stay healthy, everybody. Talk to you then.